Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 24 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios Playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to log pipeline execution details using stored procedure in Azure Data Factory. So this is the same requirement that we had achieved in the previous video using script activity. And we had discussed that the same can be implemented using either lookup activity or stored procedure activity. So as we discussed, there are three ways. Either you can use lookup activity or stored procedure activity or script activity to run your SQL queries and to insert rows into the SQL table. Okay. So this uh, in this video, we are going to focus mainly on stored procedure activity, but I will show you a glimpse of how to use lookup activity as well. Okay. So uh, here is the scenario. We have this master pipeline that is also calling the child pipeline inside for each. Okay. With the help of execute pipeline activity. So we want to log the details of this pipeline into the SQL table called pipeline run status. And these are the details, pipeline name, pipeline run ID, pipeline trigger time, pipeline trigger type, and execution time. Okay. So all these four properties are available in the ADF directly in the system variables, as we have seen in the previous video. But to fetch this data, we had used set variable activities and we calculated the difference between the start time and the end time. And that is what gives us the pipeline execution time. So to use lookup activity, we can easily replace the script activity with the lookup activity. Okay, let me show you the same. Uh, so this is the pipeline that we had created in the previous video. The actual work that is happening in this pipeline is actually in this part. Okay, so the whole pipeline is basically this. And just to log the details, we are using these components. Okay. So this is the set variable activity, which is determining start time. And here we are getting the end time. And here we are executing the SQL query to insert records into the table. And also we are determining the difference between end time and start time to get the pipeline execution details. Okay. Now to replace script activity with lookup activity, let me just copy this whole query and let me delete this script activity and let me use lookup activity. Let me join these two. And let me use the data set that is pointing to Azure SQL table. And now in this query option, we will paste the same query. Now here is a catch. We just need to make a minor change while using lookup activity because this is not a select statement, so it will not return any output as a result. Okay. It will just insert the value or data into the SQL table, but lookup activity is meant to return some data. So in order to ensure that the pipeline doesn't fail, we just need to give a semicolon and we need to give a select statement. So I'm just giving a dummy select statement. Suppose select one as output. Okay. And we are done. Okay. If I hit on okay and if I debug this pipeline, we are expecting that here in this table, one new insertion will be made with the help of this lookup activity. So let's wait for this pipeline execution to be completed. Yeah. So you can see the pipeline execution is completed successfully and this lookup might have inserted a new record. Let me check by running this query. So you can see the third row has been inserted newly on this date. This is the trigger time when the pipeline got triggered. And if we compare the run ID is 2D and ending with 08. So you can see 2D 08. So it is successfully getting the correct values from the pipeline details. Okay. Now we want to achieve the same thing using uh, stored procedure activity. So instead of lookup activity, we will use stored procedure activity. Let me copy this query and let me just keep it somewhere. Let me use notepad. And let me store it here just for the reference. And now let me just delete this lookup activity and let me drag a stored procedure activity here. So let me connect these two. And here in settings, we have to select the link service pointing to Azure SQL database. So I'm doing that. And then we have to select the stored procedure. So let's create the stored procedure. So let me hit on new query. So let's write the SQL query to create the stored procedure. Okay. So create procedure and procedure name. So let me give DBO dot 
and the table name is pipeline run status let me copy that let me give sp underscore and this table name okay so you can give any name to this procedure and what will be the input parameters we have to define here so what are the things that we need from the pipeline we need to get these details that is pipeline name pipeline run id pipeline trigger time pipeline trigger type and execution time in seconds okay so let's create the input parameter for all the details that we require so let me give pl underscore name and it should be varchar type so let me give the data type as suppose varchar 20 and then what do we require is pl underscore run id so let me make it as a input parameter for pn underscore run id and for that let me give varchar 50 the next one is trigger time let me give pn underscore trigger time and uh, this should be a date time data type and then we have trigger type trigger type Barker say 20 and then pipeline execution time in seconds okay pipeline execution time in seconds okay let me give it as Barker say 10 and now we have to write the logic for this stored procedure between begin and end statement okay so we just need to fetch the details from the pipeline and we need to write the insert script so between begin and end we just need to write the insert script let me copy till this point insert into table name then values okay earlier when we were using lookup and script activity we were using these expressions inside values okay which we were getting directly from the adf pipeline but now we will be using these parameters okay that is input parameters here in the value okay so let me copy one by one after pl underscore name let me copy pl underscore run id um, then trigger time i'm just copying and pasting it trigger type and execution time so let me run this to create the procedure yeah so we have this procedure in place now so let me copy this procedure name and let's go to ADF pipeline and here let me refresh. So here either we can edit it and provide the procedure name or we can select it from drop down as well. Okay, let me check. So you can see the same procedure name is populating here in the drop down. So let me select from the drop down and now here we have this stored procedure parameter options. Let me expand and let me import the parameters present in the stored procedure so you can see these are the same parameters that we have created okay these are the five parameters that it is populating here now we just need to pass the values for each of the parameters so let me add dynamic content and let me go to system variables so the first parameter is pipeline name so let me select that then we have pipeline execution time in seconds i'll come to this one later let me select run id from system variables and similarly let me select trigger time trigger time and then trigger type trigger type so if you see the data type here everything is string but this one is a date time so we have to convert it to date time okay so we will use the format date time function here but if we see pipeline execution time in seconds we do not have any direct system variables that we can use to fetch that detail. So in the previous video, what we did is we created two set variables to determine the start time and end time and the difference of the same will be giving us this pipeline execution time. Okay. So we will go for the similar approach now as well. So to do that, we will try to send these values that is start time and end time into our stored procedure. Okay. So instead of this parameter, let me create let me remove this and let me create two parameters one will be the start time and let me give it as varchar say 50 similarly let me create end time and and we will use these two parameters 
to determine this value okay because in our table we have to pass this value so now you can see since we have removed this parameter completely so it is throwing error mark saying must declare the scalar variable with this name okay so since we have replaced it with these two variables so it is throwing error so let me explicitly create a variable for this property so here after begin let me declare a variable with this name i have copied it and let me make it var care uh, 20 because it will hold the time in seconds so 20 is fine and then we have to write the logic to determine the value for this variable so we had used date diff function to calculate the uh, difference between start time and end time earlier as well okay so we will use the same here so let me give select and then this variable name then equals to then we have to give the date diff function so here in the interval we have to give second and we have to calculate the difference between start time and end time So that's it our procedure is ready what we did is instead of using this uh, as a input parameter we took two parameters that is start time and end time which we are fetching from adf pipeline and using these two we are calculating the execution time in uh, in seconds okay with the help of date diff function and the same variable is passed here to insert record into the table okay so we need to alter this procedure let me instead of create procedure let me use alter procedure and let me hit on execute so procedure is updated now so let's go back to adf now so here we need to re-import uh, the parameters because uh, we have made some changes instead of this we should be seeing start time and end time let me try to hit on import so let's wait so now you can see the parameters are changed okay so one by one we have to provide value to this parameter okay so for end time, let me give uh, from variables, we have to select this end time and let me also format it to up to seconds level. Okay. So for that, let me use format date time here. And inside this, this variable will be passed and let me give the format as yyyy mm dd hh mm ss and let me close the bracket and let me pass it as a string so i'm using this curly braces let me copy the same for start time let me paste it here and instead of end time we will use start time because this is the variable name so it says uh, start time cannot be referenced since it is not the variable name let me go to variables and we have an underscore here let me use the same yeah we are good now and now let me pass each of the values one by one from system variables so this is the pipeline name then run id then trigger time trigger time so for trigger time as well we need to format it to correct date time format let me use the same let me provide the format as yyyy mm dd hh mm ss and we are good so after that we have trigger type so we are done let me hit on debug and let's wait for this uh, pipeline execution to complete and then we will see if fourth record got inserted or not so pipeline is currently in progress let's wait yeah so now the pipeline execution is completed and this stored procedure activity also ran successfully and you can see all these values are passed into the input parameters okay so it is successfully getting all the correct values so we are good let me go to the uh, table and let me hit on this select query to see if fourth record got inserted or not so you can see fourth record got inserted successfully and it is fetching the correct 
pipeline run id as well and if we hit on publish and if we create a trigger for this it will also insert a new record for schedule trigger okay let's wait yeah publishing is finished let's go to trigger option and we had created this trigger which i have stopped so here let me change this start date to today's day and let me provide current time that is 9 am so currently it is exactly 9 am so let me create the trigger for suppose 93 or 92 i'm good with 92 let me click on okay and let me change the status to started and let me publish this change okay so this trigger is already attached to the same pipeline let me show you that if i hit on this pipeline name you can see this is redirecting to the same pipeline and now the publishing is also finished now let's go to the trigger run in the monitor section i have filtered it with the uh, last one hour let me change it to 930 so in the past one hour there is no trigger run let's wait for one more minute and then we should be seeing the trigger run let's hit on refresh so you can see a new trigger has been started let me click on this pipeline and here we can see the pipeline run id which is currently in progress so you can see all these execution are in progress let's wait so once it is finished we will see a new record getting inserted here as the fifth value and that should have the pl trigger type as scheduled trigger okay let's wait yeah so you can see pipeline execution is finished along with the stored procedure so it should have run this stored procedure and if we click on this execute option so you can see in the fifth record has been inserted with trigger type as scheduled trigger with the current time okay and this is the run id okay so this is the same run id as we can see here so that's it for this video guys i hope you like the content please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you